Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at stoichiometry of precipitation reactions, and we're going to do two, two examples. Um, there, just to preview this, um, it's, it's pretty much, you know, like using a, like regular stoichiometry. The, the difference here is we're working with molarity and not so much grams. Um, actually, this first problem, we're actually using, um, we'll be using molar masses in grams and molarity and then in the following problem we'll be doing all molarity so this question says what mass of sodium chromate is required to precipitate all the silver ions from 75 milliliters of a 0.1 molar sample so first of all we need a balanced reaction so that's step one and this problem is nice enough to give us the compounds already so these are our starting compounds in a to CrO4 plus AgNO3. There's a couple ways to do this problem. We could work with um, uh, we could work with net ionic, or we could work with the full molecular. Um, I tend to stick with the full molecular on these kinds of problems. So um, to come up with the product, we need to look at the ions involved and see which combination results in a precipitate. Um, we have two choices. We have sodium nitrate or um, silver chromate. Now, um, be careful because you need to come up with the ions first. This is a plus one, and the chromate here is a two minus. So our, uh, our other choice, this is the precip So this is soluble. This one is not. It's a chromate, and it's not group one or ammonium. So our product is going to be Ag2CrO CrO4 solid, and the other one will be soluble NO3. Okay, and now we balance, so we have two silvers here, so put a two here, and that, uh, yeah, actually we need it, now we need a two there also. Um, Okay, so this is saying uh, how much of this do, do we need, and we're actually adding a solid. So we're not starting with AQ, AQ here. This is actually a solid compound, so it's not dissolved yet. But this is saying what mass of this is required to precipitate all the silver ions. So in order to react all of these ions and create this, um, how much of this do you need to start with? So first of all, we need the moles of this reactant of the silver nitrate and then we could figure out translate that into how many grams of this is required to react with all the moles of this okay so we're gonna go from this is kinda how this is gonna go molarity and we're gonna change that to moles uh, molarity of substance X we're gonna change that into moles of substance X and then we're gonna change that into moles of substance um, Y and then to mass or grams of substance Y. So this should end up taking us uh, three steps. One, two, and three. So we'll go 75 milliliters and change that to liters by doing this times 10 to the negative third and times that by our molarity um, 0.1 moles of AgNO3 over uh, one liter. Okay, so our liters cancel. So we've done that step. Now um, we need our next step is mole to mole. So it's going to be one over two. So one mole of sodium chromate for every two moles of AgNO3. So this cancels. Okay, and now, so we did that step. Now our last step is to change this into grams. So we need the molar mass of, of sodium chromate. So we go one mole. And then uh, I have the molar mass. Um, it's uh, 161.97 grams. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, so you could go ahead and, uh, actually let me, let me see if I can, uh, let me 
Let's see if I can uh, enter this problem here. So we have uh, 75 10 to the negative third times 0.1 times 161.97 and then divide that by 2 and we get um, so we should have because of our measurements here so our two measurements are molarity and uh, the volume so out of those that's three sig figs so our answer should be three sig figs 0 0.607 so point six zero seven grams of sodium chromate should be used okay and so if you did so what this question is asking is when you solve for like one of the reactants um, what you're actually doing is if you use 0 0.607 grams of this it will react all of these so this will go to completion um, a question it's not really a trick question but if there was a question that said how many uh, what's the concentration of NO3 ions left over? The answer is not zero. Um, the reason is these actually don't even react. So if they ask for the concentration of NO3 after this reaction, the concentration of NO3 would be 0 0.100 molar. If they ask for the concentration of Ag, after this reaction, this would be essentially zero because the AG is going into making up this solid here. Okay, so, um, and you would have to do a little bit of work, but you could calculate the concentration of sodium also. Um, you'd have to find moles of sodium from this and then divide by whatever volume is present if the question asks that. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next question here. Um, and so now we're working strictly with um, molarity and volume here on this problem. So what mass of solid product can be produced when you have 50 milliliters of this reactant and 200 milliliters of this concentration of the other reactant? So by giving you volumes and molarity, they're giving you moles. So you have moles of both reactants this should uh, this hopefully jumps out to you that this is a limiting reactant problem. We have to figure out which one runs out, and whichever one runs out will be the one that limits how much product is formed. And in this one also, they start you off with uh, names here, so we need to write the compounds, and we need to come up with a balanced reaction. So that's step one. So aluminum nitrate, and hopefully you guys are getting pretty used to these, and you could come up with those in your head. So aluminum nitrate would be AlNO33. This is the nitrate, so it's soluble, no exceptions. Potassium hydroxide. Hydroxides are generally insoluble, but this is a group one, so this is soluble. Okay, so we have our other reactant is that. So we need to come up with a combination here that's insoluble, and it would be those two. So it would be AlOH solid and the other one is a spectator so these essentially don't react so the AQ okay um, now to balance we have three hydroxides here so put a three here uh, and then put a three to fix the potassiums and that also fix the nitrates okay so the next thing to do is um, we have starting mole amounts of both of these so we need to figure out this mole in this mole and compare it to the reacting ratio that's required. So the ratio is three of these for every one of these. So our mole amounts here are um, fit for um, aluminum nitrate, 50 times 0 0.200. Okay, and this gives us um, this gives us point zero one zero zero three sig figs. Okay, 
So this is this is what we're, we're determining our limiting reactant, and next we have 200 times 10 negative third 0 0.100 moles per liter of potassium hydroxide, which gives us 0 0.0200. Okay, so the laws of Mother Nature require a three um, to one ratio of reactants. Um, and what we actually have is two to one. So we have 0 0.02 over 0 0.01, which is actually two to one. So 0 0.0200 over 0 0.01 or two to one. So you could, as you can see, um, what we require is three, but what we actually have is two. So what we put on top runs out. We don't have enough. We need three. We have. We only have two. Two to one. So KOH is. This is what we're going to use. This is our limiting reactant, and we use this to determine how much product is formed. So we're going to use this number here. Um, this is why I like. Back when we solved, figured out limiting reactants, uh, I gave you guys three methods. This problem right here is why I prefer this method. When you're working with molarities, it's much easier because you don't have to look up molar masses to get the moles. So all you need to do is just look at the mole ratio of what you, what's required and what you actually need. Um, and then you could, it's real simple. It's the fastest way out of the three methods I showed you guys. Um, so this is what we used for everything, for any future calculation. So go ahead and um, finish this problem. We're, we're trying to figure out how much, uh, mole, uh, how much mass, so we want grams of ALOH3 is formed. Okay, so let me write in a different color our steps here, but I want you guys to go ahead and finish this. So we're going to go from moles of KOH we need to convert that to moles of aluminum hydroxide. So anytime you're going mole to mole, you need to be using this ratio. So we'll be using the 3 to 1 ratio on that step. And then next is to get the mass of um, aluminum hydroxide. Okay, so I'll see what you guys uh, come up with as part of the homework.